Now, I've done this story with the Interface Seminary before, so they must excuse me if I repeat this, but it's such a lovely story, I can't find a better one. How do I explain the idea of pluralism to little children, let's say? Or even very senior theologians, I, I have fun with them too. <laughs> how do you explain their pluralism? I said, this is how I explain. I said, <clears throat> I'm invited to go to lots of Christian primary schools to do assemblies, and I love, you know, this is the, this is the spirit shining there. So I love going to the primary school. And they're all sitting cross-legged. Mr. Lakhani, tell us about Hinduism now. <laughs> and I say, <clears throat> my boy, my first question to you is, do you like to think of God like your father in heaven? And the Christian boys look at each other and say, what a silly question. <laughs> Of course, we, our main prayer is God our Father in heaven. Why is he asking such silly questions? I say, it's a marvelous idea. As Hindus too like to say, think of the ultimate reality like a father figure in heaven looking after you. Marvelous idea. But you see that boy in the corner, he keeps tugging my sleeve. He says, I don't want God to be my daddy. Why can't you? What's a lovely idea, God to be your daddy? No, he said, I don't want God to be my daddy. What's your problem? He said, last night when I was, I was having supper, some food fell accidentally on the floor. It's always accidental with children. On the floor, my daddy saw it. He stood up from the dining table. He waved his finger and said, Naughty boy, no supper, no TV. And I started to cry. And then my mommy walked into the room and she saw me crying. She came here and said, Come here, my baby. And she gave me a hug. And then she gave me a jam donut. <laughs> this, this is my problem. Why should I think of God like my daddy in heaven? They are so rough and tough and hairy. <laughs> Why can't I think of God like mom, mom in heaven? They are sweet and kind and cuddly and new donuts. <laughs> my boy, you like to think of God like your mom in heaven? Go for it. God is your mommy in heaven. This is called pluralism. Such a simple idea, present in simple language. As we are different, our temperaments are different, our cultural backgrounds are different. The way we relate to the idea of the ultimate reality will reflect that, will <coughs> color it, will color it. It cannot be otherwise. To recognize this and see that this is the, the, you know, the various ways we relate to the idea of the spirit, so be it. This is a marvelous, simple example. I use it in a theology, they go, they go like this, how do I get, you know, trip J, J up on this one? He seems to be getting it right here. <laughs> Such a simple idea. We will relate to the idea of spirit in our own unique manner, so be it, because we are different, thankfully. Then there's another story I do, and I've used this again here, so please excuse me. How do you practice pluralism? And of course you are going to practice it. This is again a lovely story I've used many a times. Again, storytelling is a narrative, is a very powerful tool to present subtle ideas, that's what I'm doing. There are two boys playing football, best of friends, while they are kicking the ball around, one says, you know what, <clears throat> my mommy is best in the world. Boys, to, it's standard for boys to make claims like that. The other say, what, your mommy is best in the world? Nonsense. My mommy is the best in the world, she cooks the best food. <laughs> mommy, boys, food, there's a primitive link there. <laughs> <coughs> say, your mommy cooks the best food? You brought those homemade cakes last week, they were like rocks, you can break a window with them. <laughs> <laughs> your mommy is cooking rubbish. You tell any boy of any age, that his mom is cooking his rubbish. This is the beginning of World War III. <laughs> and boys being boys, they like to resolve differences physically. So they roll up their sleeves, I told you, I'll sort you out. They start thumping you. They both love their mommies. They're thumping each other. I told you, okay, calm down. A wise man passing by said, calm down, both of you. Let me give you a resolution. Say with all the love and devotion you can muster, my mom is best. But add to magic words at the end of your sentence. The boy said, what magic words? Say with all the love and devotion, my mom is best for me. The boy said, that's exactly what we meant. My mommy doesn't know this chap exists even. <laughs> ah, in two ticks, they become best of friends, start playing football. This is practicing <coughs> pluralism. <coughs> he says you can declare with all the love and devotion you can muster that my tradition, my religious path, the one that I've chosen, the one that attracts me, is the best. But put those magic words for my progress, for me, my congregation. It fits us, fits our requirement. So be it. In simple English, simply saying, don't impose your mommy on others, they've got their own mommy, leave them alone. <laughs> and the vastness of this idea is so dramatic. He says, 
do not impose your own, if you like, limited vision regarding what spirituality is on others. Let them explore it themselves in the way that suits their own temperament. Do you know how vast this idea is? It allows various religious movements to coexist honestly, honestly and peacefully and without any compromise or without patronizing each other in, in true dignity. Not only does it do that, it allows various movements within the same faith to sit together. It, results, it produces genuine interfaith dialogue, genuine, because this is not artificial. You know, that I know I'm right, but I'm just going, not going to make a fuss with this guy. Leave him alone. You actually feel he's progressing ex very well in his own way. Why are you getting in his way? And it also resolves this very difficult issue of intra-faith dialogue. Because now, suppose you are Anglican, you've got the Catholic, they say we like all these ceremonials, the Anglicans, we don't like it. So be it. This is your way, this is my way. Mine is not better than yours. Mine suits my temperament. Yours suits your temperament. Go for it, my friend. This is the power of pluralism. Intra-faith dialogue is also correctly addressed. There's a marvelous example I use, and I'm sure you will be able to use it in your own work. You see the power of this particular thinking. Sometimes there's a mistake, like, and how can you be sure about pluralism? Because, you know, maybe, you know, we are talking different things altogether, and you are imposing this on us. And I have these theologians challenging me. And the term they use is called relativism. It means you are just anything goes. That's what you're promoting. I say, I'm not promoting anything goes at all. I'm promoting pluralism. There's a big difference. Again, I use an interesting example. You'll see how you like it. <clears throat> Suppose I want to go to the center. I point in that direction. And she wants to go to the center, and she points in that direction. And we try and compare our prescription to go to the center. I say, I have to go north. She said, no, 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 west. And he will say, no, east. And she will say, south, definitely south. When we compare our prescription to go to that same destination, our prescriptions are different. Each and every one will have slightly different prescription. This, is, this really shows that we have different starting point in our religious journey. That's all it reflects. And what's the proof of the pudding? If I'm sincere in the way I want to promote or pro progress spiritually, I'm going in my direction, and she's sincere and she's progressing in that direction, and so is he. As we progress to our own destination using our own prescription, not his prescription, my own prescription, as we progress, do you know what happens? Like magic. As we go closer to the center, all of us, we feel tremendous affinity for each other. Even though we're using different prescriptions, we don't feel comp oh dear, uh, if I start following her prescription, I'll hit the wall. <laughs> I must carry on my way. And yet, as we move towards the, if you like, our destination, we are serious about our own progress. Forget about others. We want to progress. We feel natural affinity of, with people from other faiths also because we seem to get closer to the center, we feel closer to each other as well, even though using different directions. And if we move away from the center, so we make a big hoo -ah, I'm the best, and this is it, I'm moving away from the center, I feel at, dist, you know, at, at loggerheads with people of other religion as well as people of my own religion. So the idea is rather the fight about which is the best prescription, follow your prescription to its destination. That's the whole idea of pluralism.